What's good, guys? You guys ready for another lens review? Well, today we're going to review the Viltrox 35mm 1.8Z full frame AF lens. Viltrox stepped up, sent me this lens for review. And today in this video, we're going to do a full on review for you guys. So, you guys ready to rock and roll? Yeah! What's good guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. In this video, this will be my official review of the Viltrox 35mm autofocus lens. Viltrox, send me this lens to check out, take some pictures, video, review, and I will be doing just that. And in this review, we'll also be comparing it to the Nikon Z35 1.8 lens. They're both 1.8 lenses. We'll be doing some still photography tests with the Viltrox, some video clip tests. I wanna do some focus breathing tests because I know the 35Z lens does a really good job with focus breathing. And uh, I wanna see what the Viltrox can do. And by the way, guys, we're in beautiful Huntington Library and Gardens in san marino california today that's where we'll be doing the sample images video clips for you guys so i'm pretty excited to do this review but before i get started with the viltrox 35 review i want to quickly give a shout out to mr matt Irwin. now a few days ago we sat down with matt and we had on Vahography Talk number seven, we had a discussion, an hour long discussion. Who would you photograph if you had the choice right oh. now? Who would you photograph? <laughs> a musician or politician? I mean, no, 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 not a politician. Sorry. It was a great pleasure having Matt on that show on Vahography Talk. And me and Frames, we had a conversation. We had a great time. This morning, Matt posted a video talking about the community and photographers and Nikon. And he also highlighted Vahography and yours truly. Matt, if you're watching this review, I want to thank you once again, man. Big thank you for that special shout out in that video. And you know what? You're right. This is a community. We should uplift, you know, our fellow photographers and viewers out there. And we should all have a good time. No negative vibes. You know, that's what I'm all about in this rock and roll photography channel. And hopefully you guys are too. But Matt... Thank you so much, man. You rock, brother. Rock and roll. Go ahead and follow Matt. If you don't know who Matt Irwin is, Matt Irwin Photography on YouTube. And a real quick shout out to Frames, my partner in crime when we do photography talks. Frames, you're awesome. Thank you for being there and, you know, joining us in on these talk episodes. Go ahead and follow Frames as well. Frames TM on YouTube. All right, guys, let's get started with the review. Hey guys, so this is my first unboxing for a lens review video. I'm not too big on unboxing videos. However, I get it. I get it how someone wants to see how it's packaged, what it comes with, this and that. So here it is. The Viltrox 35mm 1.8 Z mount AF lens. If this helps you decide on a lens, then I'm all for it. I'm filming this clip right now. I just bought a Z50 APS-C camera. And by the way, I'm filming this clip with a Viltrox lens. Yes, the Viltrox 33mm APS-C 1.4 lens. So that's what I'm using right now to, to film this intro for you guys with a Z50. I want to go ahead and, uh, you know, welcome that to my camera body library, the Nikon Z50 APS-C camera. I bought that camera because, you know what, I'm going to be doing some APS-C reviews coming soon on this channel. APS-C lens reviews, so I needed that camera. Makes for a cool, you know, B-roll camera or camera like this, 4K 30, not a problem. So, okay, so the 35mm 1.8Z mount AF lens. Right off the bat, guys, uh, as far as the cosmetics of this lens, comparing it with a 35Z 1.8, they weigh about the same. Build quality is about the same. 
But you do get an aperture ring with the Viltrox lens. You know, uh, you can control your aperture right on the lens here. There's an A mode which allows you to control the aperture as you do on a normal Z camera in the camera body. So that's pretty cool. So all you guys that are into the dials, controlling your aperture with the dials, it's a cool feature uh, when you're doing when you're changing the aperture setting while shooting video it's a smooth transition and i really like it it's really cool but you know if you know my reviews i like detailed specs so let me go ahead and show you this lens up close and let's go through the detailed specs of the viltrox 1.8 z lens shall we let's go i first heard of viltrox through a friend not too long ago I wasn't aware that these lenses autofocus on Z-mount cameras. Now, Viltrox does make this lens for an E-mount. I was pleasantly surprised that this company actually makes lenses for our Z6 and Z7 cameras. I know currently Tamron and Sigma have no plans to make a lens for the Z-mount just yet, but if I was a betting man, I would bet that they will in the future. So I was very surprised and pleasantly surprised that Viltrox is stepping up and making autofocus lenses. Now I know for some of you, third party is a great option and I welcome it as well. If you can get the performance and the results you want with a lens that costs half the price, then more power to all the photographers out there. Something I think you guys should know is that I haven't used a Viltrox up until making this review. This is my first time. So these sample images and these video clips, this will be my first time experiencing Viltrox, especially on a Nikon Z6, Z50 camera. I'm excited and you know what, I cannot wait to see some results. The construction of the lens seems like it's solid and of good quality. The lens hood that this 35 comes with, I've had a little trouble mounting it on and off. Now, other Nikon lenses in the past have this trouble as well. Hopefully, Viltrox will figure that part out. It works, but it's not quite smooth. On paper, this looks like it's going to be a joy to use. And that's on paper. Until I mount the lens, take some pictures, I wouldn't be able to tell you for sure. So let's go along the ride together and let's see what the Viltrox 35mm f1.8 Z-mount lens has in store for us, shall we? You guys know that the Nikon is uh, double the price. The Viltrox 35.18 rings in at about $400, US dollars. And the Nikon is around $800, $800 $850 to $850 in price. So it's around double the price. So what I'm interested in finding out in this review is the Viltrox at a $400 price tag. How close does it come to the Nikon? In other words, paying double for a Nikon Z lens, yes, it's a Nikon lens, but how close do we get with the Viltrox at $400? Curious to see what the autofocus performance is like, focus breathing, colors, uh, if it haunts during video, and all that good stuff. Like I mentioned before, I'm using a Viltrox APS-C lens on the Z50 right now. First time, guys, by the way, first time using this type of lens on a video of mine. And obviously, first time using a Z50. So <laughs> hopefully it's looking good. If it's haunting for focus, let me know because I've never used Viltrox. This is my first time. So using it, I'm set, I set it at 1.4. But you know what? <laughs> I like to go off on my little tangent sometimes. That's the 33 millimeter lens, APS-C lens on that. That's a 1.4. But that review coming soon along with the 56 1.4 APS-C lens. But in this review, let's stick to the 35 millimeter full frame AF lens. Okay? If this is your first time on this channel, Vahography. We have a rocking time here. Go ahead and like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. You get notified when I upload new content. All right, guys, moving on with the review. So my initial impressions of the Viltrox lens. Build quality is solid. The weight is about the same with the Nikon 35Z lens. The focus ring is smooth, and the aperture ring is smooth. The 35Z lens, like I said, does not have 
an aperture ring. So for those of you who want an aperture dial when you're doing video and you also want a focus ring, you get that with the Viltrox. So with the Z lens, you only get the one dial on the lens. As far as the dimensions go, they look about the same. The Z lens is just a little bit longer by maybe a quarter of an inch. The Z lens looks a little more weather sealed than the Viltrox lens. I don't think the Viltrox lens has a ceiling around the mount. But you know what, guys? At half the price, you know, is this a steal of a lens? I'm going to give you my truthful, unbiased review. So luckily, I have the 35Z to compare it with. So that's a plus. So not only is this a full-on review of the Viltrox 3518, this is a comparison video too. Let's compare them both. Why not, shall we? Let's. Uh, so why not, guys? Let's check out both. For those of you who are in the market for an awesome 35 for your Z-mount cameras, you you came to the right video. You came to the right play. So let's check out this video. Hopefully this video helps out. So let's get started with the review, guys. That's enough talk. Let's head on over to the Huntington Gardens, Huntington Library. <music> The Huntington Library, Art Museum, and Botanical Gardens, known as the Huntington, is a collections-based educational and research institution established by Henry E. Huntington. Okay, that's what Wikipedia says. I say this place is amazing. It's beautiful. It's so tranquil. When I was there, I mean, I just, it was a moment of peace and just beauty and... <laughs> Uh, let me tell you, it was a joy to be there. It was founded in the year 1919 and is located in San Marino, California, a community next to Pasadena and Alhambra in the San Gabriel Valley, Southern California area. Does that bridge look familiar? They've used that scene for a lot of movies, let me tell you. We'll get into that later. Let's get into the heart of this review, shall we, finally? Okay, so the left side of your screen will be the Viltrox image. The right side of your screen will be the Nikon Z 35mm image. Lens info is on top. And on the right, you see that I have not made any adjustments in Lightroom. These are raw files straight from the Z6 cameras. I mounted each lens on each one of my Z6 cameras. So let's zoom in to the images, shall we? And let's check them out. Right off the bat, I can tell the difference. Now, the Nikon seems in this image to be a little more crisp, a little sharper. And in this image, uh, we're gonna zoom in here and I want your observations as well. Leave comments down below. Let me know what you've observed too. Because in this review, as I show you these sample images, my thoughts are mixed. I'm getting great results here, even with the Viltrox. I mean, it's delivering. I mean, you got to keep in mind, again, you're paying half the price for uh, the 35 millimeter full frame lens that auto focuses. And the results are really close, as you see here. As I crop 100%, you can see that, yes, of course, the Nikon Z glass is amazing. However, the Viltrox is not far behind. And in some of these images, it's very, very close. What do you guys think? So I walked into the building and it housed very amazing paintings. And I was just in awe by the artistry in this establishment. It was amazing. A little bit about what you are seeing on the screen. The Huntington Library, in addition to the library, the institution houses an extensive art collection with a focus on 18th and 19th century European art and 17th to mid 20th century American art. The property also includes approximately 120 acres of specialized botanical landscape gardens. In this museum, we see some sculptures from prominent artists from the past. Now, sample images. Okay, let's zoom in here, see the sharpness. I want you to take a look at the background blur from both images here. With this image, let's take a look at background blur and bokeh. Both images shot wide open at 1.8. Look at how the images are rendering on the screen with the Viltrox and the Nikon. Look at the lights on top. 
As you can see, as I've witnessed, the Viltrux is not that far behind. The quality of the Boca Balls, the Nikon is a little bit better than the Viltrux, but not by much. I also noticed that the color temperature, although the cameras are set an identical color temperature, they're a little bit different. The Viltrox is a little cooler in my opinion. What are you guys seeing? Or is it the other way around? I'm, I'm noticing the Viltrox being a little cooler, just a tad cooler. Now take a look at this at 100% crop. Look at the detail of this painting and the cracks in it. Now when delivering sample images for a lens review, it's very difficult and challenging at times. You want to take the exact same shot same settings, same stance, same angle. So it can get hard at times. I try to deliver as accurate as possible. Now, you know, it's a big place. I did not have a tripod, so I'm hand holding all these images. I'm putting camera one down and I'm, you know, taking picture with camera two, standing at the same exact spot. The croppings might be a little off, but I tried my best to keep them the same as physically possible. And also guys, I was on a time constraint. The Huntington Library was about to close. I got there late and I had to shoot these sample images. So I was rushed, but I think I did. I got the job done. Okay, so let's concentrate on the images. I'm zooming into the frame here on the right so you can see the corner sharpness on both. Now, hey, this is a very interesting fellow here. Great, amazing work, by the way. Now take a look at the texture on his hat. Now for some reason in this image, the Viltrox looks just a bit sharper than the Nikon. Now this can be a lot of things. I mean, where exactly was my focus point? Again, I tried to get it as accurate as possible. Take a look at the bokeh lights on top. Now here's an example again of the, the quality of the bokeh balls you see. The Viltrox is giving a little, you see that circular pattern on the bokeh ball there? The Nikon is, there's, it's non-existent. So the bokeh balls are a little cleaner with the Nikon image than the Viltrox. But you know what, are you guys pixel peeping these images for your clients? I mean, you cannot really tell the difference, most probably if you're printing the image. <laughs> right guys? <laughs> Let's go 100% crop on this uh, modern work of art and as you can see here I see that the images are like almost identical uh, on the corner image the corner painting here on the left and let's do one on the right right now let's let me show you the corner sharpness on the right with that painting with these images, again, they are virtually identical. Um, yeah, I could be wrong, but my, you know, that's what I'm observing in this particular image. A beautiful painting here. Now let's go, let's zoom in here. And again, the texture of the painting, the horse. Let's go ahead and crop to the frame and see what we see here. As a photographer, as an artist, I just can't help but noticing how many talented people there were before us. I mean, these people were gifted to paint paintings like this and to have them on museum walls. That's what we, you know, that's what we inspire to do, right, guys? Uh, is this Johann Sebastian Bach? <laughs> I could be wrong, but it looks like Bach, doesn't it? Anyway, the texture of the fellow's shirt in the painting. The Nikon is just a tad cleaner, but not by much. I mean, I was pleasantly surprised. And I'm looking at these images first time like you guys are uh, while I'm, comment I'm doing the commentary here with the sample images. This is the first time I'm actually observing the work and... <laughs> So I set the focus point on the painting to the left here, on the corner of the image. I specifically remember this. So let's zoom in and see if we see any difference. Again, the focus point is on the painting on the wall there. And do you see any difference? What? How does that chandelier look with both images? ISO 1000, wide open at 1.8. And by the way, let's... <laughs> 
I forgot to mention, a lot of these images, most of them, I think all of them, are at wide open. Can you imagine having a lens that's this sharp, at wide open, and delivering these type of results? I mean, welcome to the modern era of lenses. Welcome to the mirrorless era. The Z-mount rocks. I mean, we all know that the Nikon rocks, right? We all know that Nikon Z-glass, corner-to-corner sharpness is amazing. And yes, it is pricey, but well worth it. Look at the corner here, guys. Let's look at the corner sharpness. But the Viltrox is surprisingly good. This, the Viltrox is holding its own. And <laughs> yep. Now, here's an interesting image. It was really dark. So I thought I would go ahead and capture this image at 1 8. Okay. More bokeh. Okay, so I zoomed in a little heavier on the Nikon image. I want you to see how clean that bokeh ball is, that light that's coming through the window. Now look at the left side here. This is where the Nikon shines. Look at the quality of that staircase. Look how much sharper and cleaner the Nikon is than the Viltrox. Not by much, not by much, but you got to actually pixel peep to see, to see what I'm talking about. This belt. The results are mixed, I, I believe. Uh, some of the images, the Viltrox was just so identical to the Nikon. And some of the images, of course, the Nikon was a little better than the Viltrox. And that's to be expected, right? I mean, you're paying, like I said, $900, and, and this is Nikon lens formula. And, you know, that's just to be expected. But here we go. More bokeh lights and you see that the circular pattern of the Nikon lens is a little, you know, better, a better quality. Now this image, I think, was pretty much identical. Uh, this was one of the images that I felt that I really couldn't tell any difference from both results. And I'm just being honest with you guys. Am I seeing something? Uh, am I missing something, guys? If I am, please let me know in the comments because I want to know what you know. I want. I don't know all the uh, all the answers. Okay, I'm a photographer, just like many of you. I'm a student of the art, and I don't know all the answers. I'm bringing this for you guys. If you guys want to buy this lens, this can help you in making a decision. This is the whole goal of this video, but again, I don't know all the answers and I would love to know your feedback and what you're seeing here, you know. This is the famous bridge that there's a lot of movies filmed here. <laughs> One movie comes to mind, Anger Management, Jack Nicol Nicholson, you guys seen that movie with uh, Adam Sandler? They filmed that scene here and many, many other films were, were shot here, old classics, there's a Japanese garden on top. This is the famous Japanese garden, that bridge. Okay, my settings were off here. I can admit, you know, I'm at 2.8 on this one and 2.2 on the Nikon. But take a look at the sharpness of the Nikon image. This is amazing. The Nikon's at 2.2. The Viltrix is at 2.8. Look at the corner sharpness. Look at the grass and the tree trunk with the Nikon image. The Nikon is, is just taking it, you know, home on this image. Now the Viltrox is not that far behind, but you can tell the difference here, even with the Nikon being at 2.2. Uh, yeah, my aperture was a little off here, so this is an example of how much more light you can get at 2.8 than 2.2. The Nikon's at 2.2, the Viltrox is at 2.8, both 1000 ISO. It was getting dark, that's why I'm at 1000 ISO if you're wondering. But look at how much more light you're getting. The corner image, look at the sharpness on both uh, images here. So it's a mixed bag, I believe. Yeah, a lot of the images, the Nikon image looks cleaner and a little better. But not with this image. And let me know if I'm wrong. <laughs> let, let me know what you see in this image. Now, I'll point it out. I won't say what it is, but you see where my cursor is? What do you see with the Nikon image? Both images are wide open. And uh, I could be wrong, but the Nikon image is displaying a little more of that purple fringe. 
uh, let me know if I'm wrong. But what image do you guys think is cleaner with this guy right here? With the tree, with the sky, with the leaves. Uh, the bokeh looks great on both images. And again, the famous bridge, the, the iconic Japanese gardens at the Huntington Library. Uh, look at the sharpness of the Nikon here. They're actually both great. Great. These are wide open too. I mean, back in the day when we used to have, you know, one eight lenses, we'd wish we could be this sharp, you know, but uh, yeah, uh, virtually identical here, um, you know, both, uh, you know, exceptional results and a welcoming sight, you know, a welcoming sight for sure. So moving on here. I got to the lower part of the Japanese garden and let's go ahead and zoom into the bridge area here and see what we see. And again, the focus point is set probably a little off here. I was probably a little off. Um, again, we were rushed and it was closing. I had to shoot these images and get out. So, and I'll tell you a little later in this video why I was rushed, but here we go. We close focused on the, the railing here at wide open, both lenses. And again, this is, you know, it's still daylight and I'm at ISO 1000. So you can imagine at 1.8, so you can imagine uh, what the light situation was like here and yes guys it started to rain because this is around five o'clock pacific time um two days ago or yesterday actually um, by the time i upload this video it'll be two days ago but five o'clock pacific time is actually for this month is not that you know dark but the clouds came in and it started to rain so yeah <laughs> okay so zooming in at 100 percent here at the japanese sculpture here interesting little fellow and uh, pretty much looks very close uh, i really like the nikon bokeh here more than the viltrox but really really close very beautiful work of art here and they're both at 1.8 again uh, very 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 close and I was expecting not I was expecting guys lesser results okay so this image I want to highlight I got the cropping 100% right here on both shots the settings are 100% right so we're going to go in and take a look at the background blur for a second the bokeh on the back I really like the Nikon bokeh I mean obviously you see the circles, they look like they're a little busier with the Viltrox lens. You see some kind of circular motion in the bokeh ball. And with the Nikon, it's much cleaner and much smoother. You don't see that circular motion that's going on. So let's go ahead and take a look at this image here. Actually, I was out of the property going to my car and, and this is when I decided that I'm going to start doing some video clips for you guys and that's coming really soon on this video but I took some pictures here focusing on this part of the greenery and you can see that the corner sharpness here with the Nikon is super man this lens is spectacular the Nikon 35Z lens is spectacular and the proof is in the pudding the corner sharpness here but the Viltrox, the Viltrox is not far behind. And that's my observation. And your observation might be different. And I would love, again, I would love to know your input. You know, I'm new to Viltrox and this is like my first outing. And I would love to know your input here. What do you see? Do you see it being very close like I do? It's uh, on, by the way, the wind and the rain was coming down hard here and it was very hard to get an identical focus on the, uh, those little yellow flowers. So here we got the car window. I wanted to get the, um, 
the water on the glass here and to see which lens is actually a bit sharper at 100% crop. Let's look at the chrome portion of the vehicle and see if we see any uh, purple fringing, CA, chromatic aberration or anything like that. Take a look and see what you see. Look at that right there. I wanted to highlight the sample images first in this review, but I actually did a test, a focus breathing test before the sample images in the parking lot. So here I will show you the Viltrox shooting video clips at f1.8 first. I will point my phone to the lens and let it shift focus and see if there is any focus breathing. I will get close to the lens itself. Now, with my observation here, the Nikon lens, it did a little bit better job with the focus breathing. And the Nikon lens is actually focusing much closer than the Viltrox. Now, take a look at the Viltrox here. I will switch over to the Nikon lens in a second, but this is the Nikon. This is the Nikon at 1.8. And yeah, the Nikon did a great job and there's absolutely probably zero focus breathing with this lens. This is why Z glass, one of the reasons why Z mirrorless lenses are so amazing. Look how much closer I'm focusing with the Nikon Z lens versus the um, Viltrox lens, much closer focus distance. I, I, you know, when I was at that distance with the Viltrox, it would not focus. So that's that's pretty impressive there. Both lenses did a great job acquiring focus. I wasn't expecting the ring, to be honest with you. This place is beautiful though, isn't it? Wasn't expecting the rain and I only got to see like 5% of this place. A little bummed out. Hey, look at this. She agrees, right? You agree? Yeah, she agrees that we're gonna rock and roll. Of course, in Southern California, we're not used to this, you know? Crazy. I will do some video clips for you guys, but uh, you know what? I was doing the um, focus breathing test in the parking lot of this place, and it took up a lot of time, so I couldn't get a chance. I mean, they closed at five and it started raining, so. However, let me take you to a real world gig now. But before we get into a real world gig with the Viltrox, video clip test time. <laughs> So I got to my car and it was already raining, as you see here. So we did some video clips. I had the Viltrox lens on a Z6 shooting it at 1.8. However, I had that on a flat picture profile. The Nikon is on a neutral picture profile. And I accidentally forgot to switch it to the same picture profile. However, I thought about it and I said, you know what? I wanted to see the difference of picture profiles. So here it is, the difference from a flat picture profile to a neutral picture profile. What do you guys uh, prefer? I guess for grading, probably the flat, but I really like the neutral picture profile. It's not too saturated, it's not too vivid. As far as the sharpness on both lenses, yeah, I like them both. Now the Viltrox lens here, again, with the flat picture profile at 1.8, I like the look. You know, it's got that filmic type of look, not overly sharpened. Uh, you know, what do you guys think of the background blur here at 1.8? So here we go. So you can tell the difference. I mean, the flat picture profile from the neutral picture profile. And, uh, you know, I really like the Viltrox look, you know, it's not, you know, like I said, I'm not always a big fan of super sharpness. <laughs> depending on the look I'm after. Okay, so this test, the Nikon did a better job acquiring focus and the, on the little parts of this, uh, you know, vegetation. So when I'm moving from part to part, the focus point, the Nikon Z did a really good job, you know, focusing on what I was pointing the focus point to. The Viltrox struggled a bit. Now, you know, I had it on the same exact focus point and the you know although the viltrox did a good job it struggled just a bit like right here 
<laughs> now the the Nikon nailed it every single time. Yeah, there he goes. But the Viltrox kind of struggled a bit. Now, like I said, results can get crazy at times. You know, you can get accurate focus sometimes with the lenses, and other times it can get a little, you know, unresponsive. But hey, again, it's not science; it's technology. So again, this is really uh, this vegetation is is crazy. I mean, there's a lot going on here. So I don't blame the technology. Did you see that lightning? Anyway, the Huntington Library was great, great visit, and I had a great time. It was peaceful, you know, away from the city, and uh, it's time to say so long to Huntington Library. So these are sample images, specially directed for this review. Now I will take you to a real world gig. We're going from San Marino, California to S San Jose area up north. You guys ready? Let's go. Go. Let's go from rain to sunny days. Here we go. Feloli. So I was scheduled to shoot a baby shower in this area, in this location, about a week ago. And I thought, you know what? I had the 35 Viltrox lens with me. Let me do some images with it. Let me take some images with it. So first, a little bit about the location. Feloli, also known as the Bourne Roth Estate, is a country house set in 16 acres. A formal garden surrounded by a 654 acre estate located in Woodside, California, about 25 miles south of San Francisco, at the Southern and Crystal Springs Reservoir. Okay, again, that's what Wikipedia says, but I say <laughs> this place was like amazing. And uh, this was a site, the house, that Dynasty, that you remember Dynasty from the 80s with Blake Carrington and Crystal and you know, the whole gang? Well, you know, I was a young boy at the time, but my parents used to watch that show. Uh, but that house in front of that intro, that uh, soap opera, was the Dynasty House. And this is located on the, at this area. So if you're a Dynasty fan, come check this place out. Anyway, on to the sample images. I mean, the real world images. Okay, so the Viltrox lens. The images I just went through. Uh, did you see the sharpness on the dude's eyes? It was crazy. Now let's zoom in here. These are all at 1.8 at, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm really liking these results. You know, again, the other results, we were pixel peeping a lot and we were comparing with the Nikon lens. This is strictly Viltrox all the way here. 35, this is at 2.8. A perfect lens if you're doing, you know, uh, event photography like this and you're just going around natural light. And just shooting and capturing the moments a joy to use i mean look at these results you know you would never guess that i'm shooting at 1.8 here with a lens that cost a couple you know a few hundred dollars and getting this type of results it's amazing bill trucks i think you've got a hit in your hands but for the price you can't go wrong at least for a backup i mean if you're doing 35 millimeter you know look at this look at this shot right here I'm going to zoom into the ice bucket here with the drinks. It's doing a really good job with the chrome on the bottles and the ice and the water. And, and look at that sharpness. I mean, but if you're doing a lot of 35 millimeter and this Viltrox lens is a solid backup. And OK, this, you know, who like who doesn't like grandma shots? But look at that. This is at 1.8. Look at the sharpness. I did. You know, I took the picture out of focus sharpness right on her eyes. And it is sharp. I mean, this lens delivers. The bokeh is beautiful. When you have natural light, nice light coming in, focus right on those candies in the front. It's just exceptional results. Now let's zoom in. Look at the look at the sharpness here on the chrome. Look, you could even see someone's fingerprint on the handle. Look at the top round part of the handle. You could see someone's fingerprint there. <laughs> that's cool that's cool and it delivers great bokeh as well so what do you guys think and here is Bertil, the guest of honor she was her baby shower i want to thank her for having me photograph her event now i know you guys are wondering how the focus is on the viltrox lens it does a really awesome job you know you set the focus point it's quiet it's quick 
and just like the Nikon Z lens, I didn't see that much of a difference with focus and it acquires focus. Another thing I want to touch on, when you're turning the Nikon lens to take it out, if you turn it all the way, it will come out. Not the Viltrox. You have to kind of turn it and you have to kind of turn it outwards and then it will come out. I don't know if that's a design flaw or if it's a security feature with the Viltrox. Not a deal breaker in my opinion. You can get used to it. Not a problem. Well, hopefully this video help you guys out in deciding which 35 millimeter lens to get you might have a budget you know you might be on a budget and you don't want to spend 800 dollars us dollars you know for half the price this lens might be the answer let me comment down below let me know what you think of the viltrox 35 millimeter and what you thought comparing it with the nikon z lens so the nikon's much more expensive but the Ville trucks might be for you. Good times coming on Vahography. Good rocking times. We got those Ville trucks, APS-C lens reviews coming soon. We got some video light reviews soon. We got a Nikon 200 F2 review coming soon. And eventually I'll get to that 400 millimeter, which I'm dying to do. I've just been extremely busy. But uh, we'll get to that too. So go ahead and like and subscribe. But let's rock and roll. Uh, lastly, guys, I want to take a minute and thank the community i touched on this on the top of this video but i'll close on this i want to thank all my subscribers and even the viewers that are not subscribers the community is very important it's important to stay positive and just you know move forward as as a race that's a human race respect each other respect each other's art it's uh, each other's passion and each other's work you know, you know, I put a lot of time into this, a lot of time and thought. And, you know, I appreciate all the love I get from all over the world. So, appreciate it very much, guys. So, I want to basically thank all you guys that have been a part of this. You know, take a moment to reflect on what you're doing and what, you know, what life you're living. And just appreciate the moments, you know, with your friends, family, and um, what, what you got going on. So, yeah, I appreciate that. And I want to just send a special thank you to everybody that's been there commented and subscribed to Vahography and if you're not subscribed like I said go ahead and hit the subscribe button join Vahography and the rocking time we have here we'll see you on the next video thank you for watching Viltrox 35mm 1.8Z lens yeah I think I'll be using that lens more often on this channel going out doing some street photography and just having a blast with it not to change the subject or anything, guys, but I want to ask you guys a question. I'm in the market for a nice microphone, something to do podcast, you know, vahography talk. And go ahead and leave me a comment or send me an email. Uh, suggest a nice mic. You know, I, I'm, I'm in the market for one, a nice quality sounding one. I know Matt used a nice microphone. It sound His voice sounded great. Uh, but um, something not too expensive but something of quality you know i know there's audio technica microphones used by professional you know vocalists and you know they're two three sometimes five thousand dollars now i'm not looking for something like that but something you know something that's affordable and you know good quality so the best bang for the buck i guess let me know which one that is i'm gonna be purchasing one soon so yeah all right guys this is vahography i'm vahagen your rock and roll photographer. Just like Frames would say, the 35 mm, <laughs> the 35 millimeter, 1.8 Z mount Viltrox AF lens. Hope you enjoyed the review and keep on rocking and living life to the fullest. We'll catch you on the next video. Rock and roll.